Good evening, everyone, and welcome in the Scientix webinar, Empowering English as a Foreign Language Students with STEM. My name is Miriam Molina, and on behalf of the Scientix team, I would like to thank you all for joining us. My colleagues, Maria Dios and Eleni Merciotti, are attending and supporting this webinar. If you experience technical issues, please leave us a message in the Q&A box. Today, we have Osgu Osturk, a Scientix ambassador and a teacher of foreign languages who will explain how teachers can incorporate STEM activities to their language courses. Please pose your questions in the chat and we will collect them and address them in the end. In this webinar, Osgo will give practical examples on how to design your lessons and she will also provide you with ready lesson plans. And now, without further ado, Osgo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, hello, hello, yasas. Dayo, hola, marhaba. Welcome everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. And first of all, I'd like to thank to the organization committee for giving me this opportunity. I'm very honored to be here. And also, I would like to thank every one of you uh, for participating in this event. I hope you will enjoy and have some takeaways at the end of the session. Well, empowering EFL students with STEM. Uh, a little bit about me. I have been teaching uh, English as a foreign language uh, since 2005. I have conducted each evening project since 2009, Erasmus since 2016, and scientific projects since 2018. I organized Tibetan Science Fair, which was a national project in 2018. Uh, the same year, I applied for the STEM Discovery Campaign and selected as a winner among 800 submissions. Uh, the same year again, I and one of my colleagues founded the STEM club in our school. We organized a workshop in the Tech Video Coding Festival in 2019 and continued working on some STEM projects. Uh, in 2020, like everybody, we stay at home, but we didn't stop working. I gave some webinars on STEM and scientists. And 2021, now I'm here as a scientist ambassador, which made me very happy. Well, firstly, I would kindly request you to go to Menti link on the chat box or simply copy the link, paste it on Menti and answer the question to give you a word about which one do you use most in your English lessons? Project-based learning, outdoor lessons, collaborative teaching, social-emotional learning, intercultural learning, integrated skills activities or teacher-oriented lessons. Here we can see the results. Yeah, I can see the results here now. Mm -hmm. It's coming project based learning, collaborative teaching, social emotional learning, teacher oriented lessons. Integrated skill activities. Yeah, mostly project-based and collaborative teaching is themes. Yeah, collaborative teaching. <laughs> well. <clears throat> no outdoor lessons. As far as I can see, no intercultural learning. Mm 
CNCA'dan. Oh, there comes after learning. Mm -hmm. Very well. Okay. And we can say that most the project based and collaborative teaching uh, you do. Thank you very much for your participation. Okay, do you know that you can do all of these by integrating STEM activities? You know, STEM integrated project based learning, STEM integrated collaborative teaching. You can all do this with integrating STEM activities into your English lesson. Well, as Doyen Mon from Chip said that, if you are still teaching today the same thing as we did five years ago, either the file has died or we have. So we need a change. Teachers should change the way they are teaching accordingly the necessities of the time in order not to be that. And the change starts with STEM. You know, in STEM term, S is for science, T for technology, E for engineering and M for math. STEM is an abbreviation for this subject. However, STEM is not a file or only for this subject. Uh, it is for several activities in which different kinds of subjects exist. It's a new way of learning combined with an interdisciplinary approach. That's why some time ago there came an A to STEM, STEM and it has been seen. A is for art, an art subject have been included in the STEM files activities. By seeing this, we consider that there can be more for STEM. Now that STEM is an interdisciplinary approach, we can integrate it in our English lessons to empower our ESL students as well. And that's the point where the STEM for English came to my mind. According to the OECD report published in 2009, the changing nature of society and economy necessitates that educational systems equip young people with new skills and competences. Then this will enable them to benefit from emerging new forms of socialization. They will actively contribute to economic development in a knowledge-based economy. These skills and competences are frequently required to us 21st century skills and competences. And as it stated in the Education and Skills for the 21st Century UNESCO report, skills for the 21st century digital literacy and capacity building for sustainable development and work citizenship are lessons that all children, young people, and above must develop for education to make a decided contribution to achieving Agenda 2030 together. And the role of STEM, what's the role of STEM? All of you have heard about the Bloom's taxonomy many times, and I'm not going to tell and bother you about it in detail today. However, I'd like to emphasize its importance and the role of STEM in putting this theory into practice. In the Bloom's taxonomy, it suggests how the teachers should organize their objectives, prepare their lesson plans, create some activities to develop their lower, higher order skills, you know, uh, we see that in higher order skills, there are creating, evaluating, and analyzing. This is what we do by STEM, actually. Uh, we make our students break down what they already know in order to identify relationships. We make them investigate the facts and come to conclusions. At the end, they develop something new with the new information. We do this by the help of bringing four different disciplines science, technology, engineering, mathematics, together. When we look at the 21st century skills, we see that four C's for our students' learning and innovation skills that can be improved at school in our lessons. Those are critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. With the task, with the project, our STEM implementation, we help our learners reinforce their creativity. They work together, they think, they communicate. The main point in integrating English into STEM subjects is the aim of communication in another language. That makes our idea important because 
this is another consequence. So, where is integration? Uh, there are many ways to integrate STEAM into English, and here I will explain some of them step by step. Let me start with vocabulary teaching. You have an ocean of STEM related vocabulary to teach because you are teaching any word in another language. The words in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, can they all mean vocabulary by that? But of course, we have more than that. Animals, planets are related with science. Tools, applications are examples of technological vocabulary, and so on. In my case, these are sequence words, which are firstly, secondly, finally, etc. My students prepared some projects with using these words. My 11th grade made a safe experiment at home, recorded a video that they were telling the experiment processes or wrote them into a Padlet, so you can see the link here in the chat box. Uh, now, I want to show it to you. Here, you can see the experiment. They use firstly, after that, finally. These are the videos of the students' experiments. You can see all of them here. You have the list, you can check it for the details. And my 10th grade, Prepare some do-it-yourself projects where you can create something new with uh, using waste material, for example, and pull off the same stuff. You can see the first, second, finally, again, and they design these things by doing them themselves. Yeah. Then we look back at the And for the grammar, yeah, uh, you know what? I'm fed up with making the students use the daily routine sentences. I get up at 7 o'clock, I wash my face, and so on. Of course, I know present simple is used for our daily habits. But there is another usage of present simple, which most students will find more interesting, and it is science fiction. Especially with young learners, to teach about the life cycle of different animals would be extremely enjoyable. You know, we all heard about the butterflies like Ken, but have you ever heard of penguins? Have you seen a fox in any book? You can create yours. Actually, my 11th grade loved to see the lifespan of aluminium, which I found a photo of it in Pinterest app. It was a very exciting lesson. ESL teachers, as the most creative, most innovative group of teachers in the world, please don't misunderstand me, the other teachers, if we have any here, but really, don't all projects, innovative approach, and interesting ideas come from English teachers? We can find other ways to implement STEM topics in English, not only through our lessons, but also through some Fancy reading exercises. You can find lots of STEM subjects related to or ebooks from various resources. And here you see some links from Vision Rocket, Goodreads, uh, and Addis Garden. It's uh, a storytelling activity actually. You can find lots of resources on the internet, both for teenage and teens, or also for the younger students. You can have your younger, young learners who don't know reading yet, so some audio books uh, can work as well. Or simply you can tell some science stories as a storytelling activity. Well, every age of learners love games. Gamification is also an important activity which can be used in STEM teaching. But here I would suggest you something more interesting. You can add some STEM-related topics in your drama activities and role play. Uh, according to many researchers and specialists in ESL5, drama and role play have many advantages in a child's learning, both academically and real-life experiences. It boosts self-reliance, 
allows students to work together and to share responsibility for the development of perfect actualization, opens up possibilities for free choice and individual decisions. Therefore, it helps the individual to explore many aspects of the work and even his own feelings and emotions. Does not seem already targeted? 21st century skills? So, why not to give some roles related to STEM jobs, for example? And scientists. One of the best inspirational resources for all the STEM teachers and ESL teachers who would like to implement STEM subjects into their lessons, maybe after this session, is the Scientex portal. As many of you know, Scientex uh, is a portal for science teachers all around Europe. However, I have some good news. Well, it's not only for science teachers, of course. It's open to all teachers from Europe who would like to learn about STEM education conduct some STEM projects and find many kinds of resources on STEM, from articles to webinars or workshops, etc. From the Scientix repository section, of which I'm sharing the link here, you can find some teaching materials, reports, training courses, and so on. Here, you will find an example lesson plan from Scientix repository, which I would like to show you as an example, if it's a good example. It's called A Journey from English Language Classroom to Mars. You see, it's a STEM integrated English lesson plan. Uh, I suggest you to have a look at it after this session. You can search any source from the repository by topics, by ages, STEM strategy criteria, and so on. After seeing the results, you will see that the resources are available in multiple languages. Well, uh, now it's time to share you, uh, share with you the sample lesson plan that I prepared for the STEM is Everywhere and STEM IT courses. Let's begin with the one for the young learners. Well, in this lesson plan, let me show you here. Well, in this lesson plan, the teacher starts the lesson by telling a story. She finds a drink in the kitchen, and when she drinks it becomes smaller and smaller, then uh, she finds herself in the garden. She asks that what she can see in the garden. Then she plays a familiar song from YouTube, insect version of Finger Family. Do you remember it? Beetle finger, beetle finger, just like that. <laughs> yeah, she teaches the insect names here. Yeah. Then uh, she asks for some discussion questions. Um, what kind of living things are there in the garden? If these insects are fed or so, something like that. She explains the living and non-living things. Then they all watch a video on YouTube. Uh, it's about how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly where the students will learn about the life cycle of a butterfly as a STEM subject and also present simple STEM as English grammar structure. Then uh, she explains what the box and test are, the difference between them. Then they play a group game on a web 2.02 learning app. Uh, in this game, they uh, group the box and test. Next is story time. Uh, in this story, the teacher reads a story about a girl and her father who works as a pest detective. Uh, pest detectives keep pests away from our houses, you know. Before the study, story, sorry, uh, the students discuss on how to keep pests away from our houses safely. And after the story, they play a game on Bluetooth. Uh, an online quiz tool like Kahoot, you know, Lucas is something else. This was the technology part of the lesson. Then the teacher shows a video from YouTube about preparing friendly index traps. As an assignment, students will design a safe trap for insects, and this is the engineering topic of our lesson. For students who doesn't like building, the teacher has an alternative assignment. Don't worry where they can design their own maps. 
with some materials, crayons, scissors, glue, pipe cleaners, waste materials, just like that, or just color, coloring some insects on the handouts to give. Finally, the teacher gives a worksheet on which there are some multiplic uh, multiplication and coloring activity for the math topic of our lesson. And you can see here, you can see it in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Here, can you see the caterpillar? Yeah, there are some multiplication uh, here. The students do it and then find the proper color and then color the caterpillar. And this one, the grouping gate. Well, uh, it shouldn't have to be a whole lesson plan. You can also use some activities activities like a card game, you know. Uh, you can see an example from Brainbox website. I love this site because you can purchase the game to play in the physical classroom as well. Well, in this game, the students are given some cards on which there are some pictures. You know, you can see my insects here, bat, ladybird, butterfly, etc. They need to look at the card very carefully for 10 or 20 seconds. It depends on the learner's age or level. Then they turn the card down uh, and the teacher asks some questions. They need to answer the questions without looking at the card if possible. If it's hard, then they can look at the card and answer both ways possible. You can decide how to play uh, considering the age and level of your students. For example, how many ladybirds can you see? Are the ants red or black? Uh, maybe after that, the students can uh, ask their questions to each other, you know. Well, uh, you can do some STEM projects. <laughs> I want to uh, talk about my uh, STEM project, STEM E for English, which I conducted in 2018. Uh, in this project, we participated in uh, some online events with some famous Turkish scientists from NASA, CERN and Cambridge University Physics Department. Uh, there were no COVID situations those times, but my students had attended online lessons from their classroom. They taught that, uh, they learned that. My students created some designs for fighting with global warming. They use ER, VR technologies, you know, uh, they are uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, in English lessons, and they learned about coding, why they were coding a mobile game on code.org. They build a robot. Yes, all of these activities were done in English classes. I participated in standard theory campaign contest, and it was selected one of the best scientists, scientific projects among 800 others, and I represented my country in an international workshop in Brussels. You can also consider conducting a scientific project and apply for several competitions held by scientists or STEM alliance and have the chance to be one of the best teams in Europe. I highly recommend it. And now I want to, I would like to show you another great project which was conducted through Achieving, another project platform for European teachers. Most of you have heard about that. Uh, this is Sying by Selda Sezer Topal and Hümeyra Yüce from Turkey this year. Uh, the team, uh, her partners and their students have made lots of materials in English combining STEM activities. You know, like card games about animals, planets, scientists, and tinker cards, green screen applications, uh, a story on story jumper, uh, preparing an organic compost, students prepared their, or, or, uh, their own organic compost uh, and they shared uh, their videos on the Twin space. A robot competition they conducted. Uh, they designed a calendar for 2021 about planets and a wonderful e-magazine with full of sources that 
uh, students can also have it uh, with their self study, you know. They can uh, do the exercises or the other things at home uh, at their own pace. Uh, here is the link uh, to the space that is in that. Uh, you can, uh, if you would like to see more about it, you can just click on it. You can find many project ideas on Scientex project page. By search button here, uh, you can search for projects according to their topic, the target group, time, funding options. Here you see an example of project again on Scientex. Um, it is conducted by La Terra, which is one of Europe's largest climate action initiatives. Uh, in this project, they aim to bring people together to plant 500 million trees in five years, harnessing and monitoring nature's own carbon capture mechanism and enabling citizens to take urgent action against the climate crisis. You can find lots of more there. Yes, and SDG. What is SDG? The Sustainable Development Goal. Yeah, they are a global call. Uh, sustainable Development Goals are a global call to action to end poverty, protect the environment, and improve the lives and prospects of all people everywhere. All the United Nations member states adopted the 17 goals in 2015 as a part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It is outlined a 15-year plan to achieve the goals. Today, progress is being made in many areas, but overall, action to achieve the goals is not moving at the required rate or scale. That's why we really need to implement SDG in our lessons regarding a STEM subject. Uh, you can find some online resources on globalgoals.org and UN.org Sustainable Development. Here are the links. And now I want to show you another lesson plan on uh, goal 13, climate change, fighting with climate change. Uh, the lesson plan name is Global Warning. Yeah. Uh, the name of the plan is Global Warning, which includes a warn in the name. It's not a letter mistake. Uh, well, the teacher starts the lesson talking about the weather that day. Then she asks if the students know the terms of global warming and climate change. Uh, after that, she shows the video from YouTube to get the students' attention to the topic. It's about uh, global warming, but uh, a very famous scientist uh, showed this issue uh, through using some emojis. It was very fun at the same time. Um, after the video, there is a brainstorming activity where the students discuss and uh, write on a tablet about the causes and effects of global warming and climate change. And the teacher then uh, opens a reading text on the board, or, uh, or you can give it as a handout. Uh, it can be both for your uh, remote teaching uh, classrooms or also face to face classes. Uh, students will complete an KWL chart. Uh, the English teachers are very familiar with this KWL chart, where they will write some sentences, uh, but here they will use present perfect tense. Well, the first one for uh, K, something they have already known. Uh, for the second, for W, something they have always wanted to know. And for the third, for L, something they have just learn. Yeah, here is the graph. Next, the students will play uh, an escape room game. Um, I assume that you know about the escape room activities. They can be played again digital or face to face. There are some tasks to complete in order to uh, get all the codes, find out the password, and and then escape the room. As an assignment, teacher gives students a choice board uh, from where the students choose one uh, from six tasks to complete. 
uh, from designing to recording videos, creating posters, writing plans, there are lots of uh, interesting ideas. I personally like Toys Boys because they give the chance to students to select their own assignment task according to their own interests, you know. Uh, yeah, the, uh, and again, here you can see the link and also in the chat box there is a link for this lesson plan that you can uh, see in detail. Yeah, if you are still not sure about what to do or you have an idea but not decided how to do it, there I can suggest you one last thing. Scientist webinars like this one and other live events uh, can provide you the need of inspiration. There are many different topics taught on these events and they can give you the assistance that you need to implement seeing into your ESL classroom. Yeah. Here are, you can see the uh, scientific slide and scientific event links that you can get benefit. Yeah. You can reach me by using the email here and on, in, uh, on Twitter with this username. Now I'm all yours for your questions. Yes, thank you so much, Osgu. Um, we have uh, a lot of uh, interesting questions. Yeah, uh, one second okay. that I can find right. them. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much. It was very insightful and a very useful presentation. The viewers were very enthusiastic and we have about half an hour for all the questions. So if someone wants to add anything, please feel free to add it in the chat. Uh, we have many comments of appreciation. For example, um, Serkan said, thank you very much. This is a very interesting webinar. Eleni said, um, interesting presentation. Thank you very much, Osgu. And Leticia from Spain said, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, all the resources were very useful. Um, so we have some questions as well. How would you include uh, school community members, especially parents, into a STEM project? Well, uh, you can prepare uh, some parent meeting, you know, and do it as STEM job fair. For example, maybe one of your uh, students' parent is an engineer and the other one is a carpenter, maybe. Uh, the other one is the gardener. They can come together and uh, maybe uh, they can present their jobs. What do they do and uh, what's the relation uh, their job with STEM subjects? They can do it. They can help you. Especially, I really give importance to parental involvement in all of the areas because uh, they are really our helpers, you know. And in this topic they again can help you by this one or you may create some uh, different assignments for your students but prepare it with their family you know uh, they need help from their fathers or mothers uh, and they can prepare the, this assignment to you with their family these are the first things come to my mind Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, we keep receiving a lot of thank you so much. Very well done, Osgu. Thank you. Very interesting. Um, another question is, uh, most of my secondary students are interested in science, but their English level is not good enough yet. How do I integrate STEM without them feeling frustrated? Yes, you can start with very basic vocabulary, you know, especially uh, the vocabulary knowledge that they already know. Start with this. Um, start with the familiar ones, you know. Uh, and after that, one by one, you can add some more vocabularies and also you can add some grammatical structures that's, uh, that's very basic ones, but uh, the present simple, uh, which I gave in my lesson plan example. Or the comparative of adjectives, you know, this, um, for example, this insect is smaller than that one. Or uh, Australia is hotter than uh, Canada, 
you know, there you come with the climate change, for example. Uh, start with the basic familiar ones, and then one by one, step by step, you can go more comple complex ones. And don't forget to use gamification, games, designing. Designing is very important in STEM activities. Definitely, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. Um, we are also getting another question from Dilek. What were the barriers during your implements? And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Um, the first barrier, uh, the first problem I uh, came face to face when I was conducting my first project, uh, the school management. <laughs> you know, my uh, my headmaster said that you are an English teacher. What? Uh, why do you do like these activities? What about STEM? Why do you care? He said. And I thought uh, that my students, especially the 11th grade, um, are more interested in science and uh, mathematics and, you know, this kind of subject because they have a university entrance exam in front of them and they are not a responsible English lesson uh, for this uh, exam to, ent uh, to enter university and they lost their interest and I wanted them uh, to to how can I say um, to be involved in English by using their interest in STEM. that's why I started this and, um, and after that he uh, he was uh, he was more how can I say he was more uh, supportive to my uh, activities because he saw the difference uh, in the students. Uh, and one more, yeah, sometimes I find some uh, topics really difficult. For example, in my STEM for English uh, activity project, uh, I have a topic called particle physics, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's very, uh, very difficult thing to me. But uh, I said that I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert and I don't have to be. I just bring the topic into my lesson. I bring the expert in my lesson through online conference. He uh, talked about part particle physics. The students asked their questions to him and it was like that. Yeah, I didn't teach it, but I brought it into my lesson and it was very enjoyable for my students and they said that we didn't understand it in our physics lesson, but now I know what particle physics is. And that was the point. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, there will be some barriers, some problems you will face, of course, but uh, don't give it up. You will find a way. We are the most innovative teacher, believe me. I agree with you. It's really important innovation and we keep getting a lot of comments uh, from Stefania Cyprus. Thank you so much, Osgo. Uh, Sarkan says, thank you. This, very, uh, this is a very interesting and interactive presentation. Uh, more questions. How to integrate STEM uh, in the history scientists? I think um, it means how to integrate history in the resources from scientists. How can we do that? Ah, uh, you mean uh, integrating STEM activities into, uh, into history? Well, uh, you can use uh, the scientists, most famous scientists, like you can bring them in this, on the stage. And uh, also, you know, uh, science has a long history. You can choose some um, the turning point, you know. For example, the Sputnik or uh, the the Moon mission, the Mars mission. It's not history, of course, uh, but uh, the Moon mission can be chosen as a topic, and you can talk on it. Uh, you can discuss it with your students. You can clarify your topic with your students also, and. Uh, you can use technology history, you know, the history of technology. Uh, what was, uh, what, 
that were in our parents' life uh, or grandparents' life. And what do we have now? You can compare uh, the things uh, that they have today, you know, and maybe they know it better uh, that they are really lucky, you know. Uh, in my grandmother's time, there was no washing machine, there was no TV at home, there was only radio to listen to news from the world. Uh, but today, I have computer, I have internet. They can compare these things. And also, the history of math, you know, you can, uh, you can, you can mention about famous historians, for example, Hypatia, the first mathematician, women mathematician. We can talk about that. And these are the first that come to my mind. You can find lots of things uh, from the internet and also the scientific repository when you click the history uh, on the search button. Thank you so much. That was very interesting and useful again. Uh, we keep getting more questions. Uh, next one, as an English teacher, what STEM materials should I integrate in the classroom to start with? You can use everything. For example, um, the youth uh, actually it changes according to your student's age and level, of course. But we, let me talk about the young learners. They mostly use crayons, sizers, and uh, papers. You know, they like to glue something. <laughs> yeah, you can use these. Uh, materials as a design and activities, as for design and activities. And for the uh, teenagers and teens, they like more doing some, uh, how can I say, some technical issues, you know. Uh, give them a robot, bring their, uh, the, bring their pieces together and code it, yeah, and uh, make it start, look at, um, you can add them a sensor for movement, a sensor for light, etc. They they will uh, they will know better than us. But it changes according to the age and level of the students. Uh, you can search also on the internet that STEM materials, and you will find lots of ideas to implement it. All right. Um, more questions. <laughs> Let me see. Yes, this comes from a primary teacher. Um, I'm a primary teacher, but I don't feel prepared with uh, STEM topics. What would you suggest? Primary? Well, uh, I find preschool and primary students very creative. They are really curious about everything, so you can use anything as a STEM subject. For example, you can take your students to the school garden and you can talk about different kinds of leaves. You can talk about different kinds of uh, box insects, just like my, uh, just like in my plan. Uh, or you can make them collect some natural items, uh, like a scavenger hunt activity. You know, you can give them a list, uh, find five different shaped Stone, find five different colored leaves, something like that. You can do it. Or something else, as a something else, you can, you, you can use weather conditions with these students. Uh, you teach, let me give an example, you teach uh, sunny, rainy, say, um, uh, snowy weather, you teach these word, vocabulary. And then you can make them uh, design a rain stick. You know, it is something uh, with a uh, waste uh, paper towel uh, cardboard. You can uh, paste uh, and close both sides uh, and put in it some, you know, some lentils or uh, rice, something like that. Uh, rice not cooked, of course. And uh, when you paste it from both sides, you can shake it and you can hear the sound. Yeah, well, what is it? This is an art design. Art is not only uh, drawing something or coloring something. Music is art also. Uh, 
And also you can uh, use lots of YouTube song videos in your class because uh, these children uh, like seeing some visual uh, materials, you know, uh, listening a song or watching a cartoon. They can be very enjoyable activities for primary and preschool students. I absolutely agree with you. I think in primary and uh, and in um, early years, we have to take advantage of the curiosity that they have. Yeah. Uh, for a change, now we have someone from secondary. <laughs> I work yeah. in secondary school, but it is difficult to um, integrate STEM projects because my colleagues teach different subjects. What would you recommend? Well, uh, this was another problem I have come to face to face in my uh, school. But um, you can ask for help uh, from them. Be honest. Say that I don't know this topic, but I know you are teaching this. How can I implement it into my lesson? If they don't help, go to Google. <laughs> you can find lots of activity ideas on Google. And maybe uh, if it doesn't work, you can find, you can um, again find some videos on YouTube. These videos can tell this topic to your students instead of you. And then you can just discuss the topic. As I said before, don't forget that we are not experts on science. We are not experts on technology. I know. We just bring the topic in our lesson. We just bring STEM in English. And then what to do? Do it with your students. They are really creative. They have lots of opinions. Uh, and in the planning section, in the planning of, uh, also, you can do your plan with your students. What do you want to do? Can is something like that. What do you want to do? Do you want to build a robot? Let's build a robot. Do you want to code? Do you want to learn how to code? Let's learn how to code. Learn with your students. Don't think that you are the teacher, you have to teach everything. No, you are a learner at the same time. If your learning stops, then your teaching stops. Don't forget it. So, learn with your students. I learned how to code with my students. I, I, I'm still not knowing anything, uh, anything more, uh, not deeply. I'm not a good coder, but I know Scratch, for example. But Scratch was my student's idea. I came to the class with Code.org. You know our of Code. It happens in our country also. It happens all around Europe. Uh, but Scratch was my student's opinion. And we opened it in the lesson. We learned together. Now I'm, not, uh, I'm a Scratch expert. Thank you so much for that. Indeed, we can in secondary we can take advantage of the knowledge of the students as well. That's really yeah. valuable. Uh, someone else is asking. So I want to try STEM in my classroom, but I really don't know where to start. Well, again, uh, the most important thing is the age and level of your students. Uh, after clarifying this, you can find lots of materials on Scientex and also YouTube and also Pinterest, something like these uh, web tools you can use. Uh, and uh, you can ask for help from your colleagues uh, from other subjects, uh, from a science teacher, from a uh, technology teacher. You can ask for help. If nothing works, please email me. <laughs> I, I, I give my word to help you. That's very nice, Osgo. Thank you so much. Uh, next question. How do you see the future of STEM education? That's a very good question. Very good question, yeah. Uh, I believe uh, STEM will be a lesson by itself. Uh, well, I don't know about uh, Europe, but in my country, in Turkey, uh, we have, yes, science lesson, mathematics lesson, uh, technology 
in some classes, some grades. Yes, we have this lesson. We don't have engineering class, but we can maybe say it with the technology and engineering, uh, something like that. Uh, but in one day, we will have some STEM lessons. We will have some STEM teachers. And uh, the students that we grow today will be the founders of our future society. So they will be more successful in their life because they learn very, they learn from very different uh, sources. You know, uh, they learn science from me. They learn science from their science teacher. They learn from, uh, they learn science from uh, internet. They learn it from their parents. Lots of materials, lots of people to help them, and these students will really create a better world. I believe in this, and especially if we implement SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, in our lessons. Uh, this is a, a branch of STEM. You can think like that. Uh, there will be a better world for our next generation. Thank you so much, Osko. Uh, let me see, we get a couple more. Uh, could you explain how to convince parents that the secondary um, the secondary school students should do projects? Uh, in my school, they are very focused on the assignment, the assessment. Uh, the assessment and projects. Well, uh, actually, I think that uh, in STEM activities, Forget about assessment and evaluation. This is not for that. This is just learning by doing. And this is, you can think of this like an extensive learning, you know. Uh, so don't make the children think about this. I don't, I didn't use assessment tools or evaluation forms. I didn't use those, all of this. And the students were very interested in the topics and they were very successful to implement in the activities. But um, yes, we have a reality that uh, our students are evaluated by some note system, by some marking system, you know. And at this point, maybe you can talk at the very beginning of your project with the parents uh, to talk about the importance of STEM. Why? we do it. Uh, it is not just for their academic uh, development, but also their personal development. It is important because we take the uh, main skills as a target, you know, communication, creativity, collaboration and critical thinking. These are the most important skills for the for a brighter future. Of, uh, for the uh, for our students for our children you know and to provide this we do these activities please forget uh, evaluation and assessment marking rate you can do this talking at the very beginning and also uh, once they are help once they are assess, uh, um, assess, uh, no, assess, <laughs> I forgot the word once they are help and um let them work with you and then when they do that please appreciate their uh, appreciate them their performance as well as your students uh, thanks to the parents just being right uh, with you just uh, trusting you something like that you know what to talk about it uh, like that I don't know what more I can say. Thank you very much, Osgood. That was a really good answer. It's always difficult to talk about assessment, especially in secondary. It's a, it's a difficult moment in their life. So mm -hmm. assessment, it's always tricky. Uh, we have a couple more. Yes, my secondary students are not interested in STEM careers. How can I motivate them? Hmm. Uh, maybe you can uh, try to um, introduce them with some unsung sciences from your country. You know, uh, the COVID situation 
is the correlation tell us one important thing it is the need for a change in our education methodology you know uh, we started in our schools we started uh, to teach remotely after COVID comes into our life. Well, in my project, I started in 2018. There was no corona, but there was online meetings in my class. And this time, it is more, more simpler to reach these people. Just uh, email them, just write them from using the social media account. Social media is a very great resource for all of us. And you can write them, you can invite them to your class online meeting for, a, on, uh, for hosting an online meeting. And you can uh, let your students meet with them. You can let your students ask their questions, ask their concerns about their future to these people because they are the experts in the fight. Uh, so, uh, what else can we say? Show them how STEM is important in their life because today we have some jobs, yes, but after five years or in 10 years, there will be some other jobs that doesn't exist today, that we don't know their name, even, even their name. Then tell them these jobs uh, will be about STEM files. Because you know this is true. There will be more. Uh, there will be more engineers, but not machine engineering. Maybe there will be bio biogenetic engineering, biochemical engineering. There are lots of different engineering will come out. So uh, let them introduce. Let them know that. Let them be aware that they need STEM subjects in their future. And also to protect our world. We also need them uh, to create uh, to create better resolutions, to do some facilities to fight with global warming or climate change. Uh, we need them. So to create a better world, we need them. Let them know that. Uh, I mean, exposure. Yeah, this is the important thing. The students need an exposure to this kind of information. Indeed, I think uh, exposure is the key so they can get to know different careers, what's happening also around in the environment, what kind of industry they have. Then they can grasp better uh, what the opportunities in the future are waiting for them. And yeah. uh, well, we're almost out of time right now. I will uh, read a few more thank yous. Um, thank you so much for sharing valuable, val valuable experience. <laughs> Greetings for Moldova. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it was a very interesting presentation. Uh, and yeah, thank you. We have a lot of thank yous for you, Osgu. Okay, and, uh, thank you very much everybody for joining me today. And thank you, uh, the organization committee, uh, giving me this chance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osgo. It was really a pleasure having you. Very interesting, everything that you shared with us. And thank you everyone who joined today's Scientix webinar. We hope to see you in our next one. Dive deeper with challenging topics. The Perimeter Institute supports teachers worldwide with also a lot of resources. This will happen on the 24th of June with Dave Fish. So I wish you all a great evening and thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Bye.